Every artist at one point in their journey comes across that one project that they expect to change their career forever. That one project where you don't care about the money. That one project where you don't care about the challenges that are expected. That one project that you want for the legacy of your career. This was that one project not only for me, but for the artists that were involved. The challenges weren't those that I wanted or expected. The challenges were more than that I thought I could handle. Those challenges almost led me to quit. This particular project brought even heavier challenges to the main characters of this masterpiece, Matt and Darian. It was a mural that took over three years to make a possibility to paint with two young and extremely talented muralists. And they brought me along to document the journey. It changed my perspective on not only the creative side of things, but the business side of things as well. It brought on stress that I had never experienced. And I'll tell you this, if I had to go through it all over again, I most definitely would. We're finally here, we're gearing up to uh, start the Camden Moda project. It's been almost three years in the making. October 2019. Yeah, October 2019. So it's been in the works for over three years. At the beginning of the year, we started to rework the design, finally landed on something we both liked. And just designing it was the most extensive design that I've ever been part of. And then painting it took six months. We thought originally it was going to take like two and a half. What is it? Today's the 6th of June, 2022, and it looks like we're finally going to start tomorrow. Pretty exciting, given that we've been anticipating this for almost three years. So. 125 different colors. That's a lot. That's a lot of colors. for. A, yeah, I'd say an average is probably like 70 or something. The contrast between that grayscale and just that hyper-technicolor, yeah. super saturated, you know, that's part of the appeal for me. I'm ready to go, man. You ready to do this? Let's do it. Let's do it. So I want to officially welcome you guys back to another video. This uh, project was something that I imagined would have been more of a documentary style of a um, finished product. Because of the circumstances, it just didn't happen that way. What you just saw was a recap video of the time that I spent on the project documenting uh, Matt and Darian during this tremendous journey. First, we are most definitely going to start with the actual mural itself and the challenges that were presented um, to the artist. I mean, the, 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 the magnitude of not only the planning, uh, the design work, but the actual work itself uh, was something that I really wanted to showcase. But that was always the main focus of what I wanted to portray with what I was capturing is just the magnitude of all the hard work that goes behind something like this. So we're going to talk about 
the actual mural. We're gonna talk about the challenges of the project. And for all of you gear nerds like me, I'm gonna break down all of the camera gear that I use, including the drone. The project was supposed to take around two to three months uh, and it took, I think, a little over six months. Throughout that time frame, I was transitioning the camera systems and trying to figure out which one was right for me. I have been transitioning from a photographer into a filmmaker. You know, as far as the project itself, just to start, the inventory of all of the paint that they had to use. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a lot of paint just left over from projects over the years, and we keep a lot of it here in the studio, and it's unfortunately becomes pretty disorganized as you go through different projects. So a lot of the work was really just going through and organizing all the paint that we already have to see what we can already use before putting in a pretty large bulk order for, for all the spray that we're going to need. And we're definitely going to try to use some latex paint and, you know, use brushes here and there and use rollers and, you know. How many different kind of colors are you guys using for the project? Do you know uh, that number? Probably around 125. Different colors? Yeah, 125 different colors. Is that including the grayscale? Um, yeah, that would include the grayscale. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of colors. For a, It's definitely the most amount of colors I've ever used on a project. Mm -hmm. But that's also, you know, it's... We designed it that way, so. Yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah, right, I mean, the contrast between that gray scale and just that hyper technicolor, yeah. super saturated, you know, that's part of the appeal for me. And to kind of describe to you the, one of the main challenges was just the weather itself. They started in midsummer and in North Carolina, during the summer, it the humidity and the heat is just exhausting. 10 hour days, I believe if not more. It started in the summertime and then stretched all the way out into the beginning of wintertime. So I believe the last night where I was filming, it was it got down to below 40 degrees. Uh, there was also a lot of challenges with the actual wall itself. Uh-oh, here we go, here we go. So basically this wall, the way that it should have been prepped is pressure washed, which it was, and dusted because a lot of the dust remains on the concrete because it's kind of porous and pressure washing should get a lot of that off but in this case it needed to be acid washed as well acid etched so basically you would just take like an acid solution and etch the wall leave it on the wall for a little bit and then pressure wash it off yeah so like basically the paint isn't adhering properly to the to the concrete Is that something you've had to deal with like most of the project the entire project we've had to deal with peeling and I mean look at this it's ridiculous it's just like it was very interesting to me how they started out they started with a grid which they put beneath the actual mural what they explained to me was it's kind of like a guideline for them to to paint and then once that's done they transition into sketching out the rest of the mural which they do with a projector we did a doodle grid to paint this portion so far but we came up a couple weeks ago just to see if his projector would actually, if it was even capable of projecting the other stuff, and it is, and we can see it pretty clearly. Rather than doing a doodle grid to paint the rest of it, we're just gonna project it tonight for two reasons. One, that's gonna save a lot of time. And two, the way we're gonna paint this, we're painting it in a specific way for the time lapse. Not having all that doodle grid underneath it is gonna make this time lapse a lot cooler. Aligning the projector alone had its own challenges. After aligning everything, they had to go up, sketch it all out, so they can go ahead and paint it. Me explaining this to you guys just doesn't do it any justice. The amount of coordination, the amount of just talent, just extraordinary for me to, to witness. You know, these guys started pretty early in the morning and they would go until the sun just went away the last couple of weeks where the you know they had a deadline that they had to paint in the middle of the night and this was probably my favorite time of filming because not only did it show the challenges of it but it also showcased their dedication to the project i mean compared to all the other pieces that you've done how much bigger of a project is this than anything else you've done? oh dude this is by far the biggest thing i've ever painted not, not only like square footage, but just the complexity of this piece is like ten, tenfold over anything I've ever painted before. 
but that's also, you know, so that's what makes it a little daunting. But it's also what makes it exciting. I think he would agree. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't feel like you're really progressing or evolving if you're not putting yourself in situations that you're intimidated by. But when the project started to stretch on and started to go over the anticipated time, it started to stretch into, you know, my own other projects I had aside. So it started to stretch into my wedding season. So trying to juggle that with my wedding season and editing projects for my other clients was just stressful. However, I can say that I was, by the end of it, I was treated and compensated very well. It was just a, a good learning experience, not only as a creative, but as a business owner. All right, now the juicy part, the gear. I used a, a wide variety of gear to film this. DJI Air 2S drone, the Sony A7C camera, which is a hybrid camera for both photo and video. The Sony a7 IV, also a hybrid camera and has the 10 bit color. And then towards the end of the project, I acquired a Sony FX3. There was a wide variety of lenses that I used. I'm a big fan of primes, but I found myself using zoom lenses for this. So with the Sony a7 IV, I was using the Sigma 18 to 35 for most of it. The Sony a7 IV, it offers that 10 bit color and it really helped me bring out the color of the imagery that we were that we were filming. The Sony a7 IV to me is one of the best hybrid cameras that you can buy right now, especially at the price. And during this time, I was transitioning into being from a, just a full-time photographer to doing more video work. You know, that's the whole goal of what I do. I want to be a filmmaker. I want to, I want to film documentaries. And I felt like I needed the appropriate gear to do that also to accommodate my commercial work. So that's why I invested in the uh, Sony FX3. And with the FX3, I got some of my favorite shots to date. You know, I was filming these shots here at I believe 24,000 ISO and just minimal amount of grain that I got and was still able to color uh, at the level that I, I colored it at was so impressive to me. When I look back and, or when I try to talk to the artists about this particular project, you know, they were so over it that, you know, we, we, we tried to get together and do a podcast about it. Um, but you could tell how much it had taken out of them. And I think that that speaks volumes making money off of your creativity it's different because you put in so much of yourself into that work i think that's what a lot of people miss everything that you get out of us whether if it's commercial creative whatever we are also selling a piece of ourselves and i know that sounds so cliche if you will but it's it's true it was it was like one of the biggest life and career challenges for me, and I think for the artists as well. Uh, I learned so much, even just with my own craft. I had to get good with time lapses. I had to get good with operating a drone. You know, mo most of the footage I captured was on a drone. I, I had to get very comfortable with color correcting because shooting all of this in log format and trying to color it and staying true to the color of the mural was something that was extremely important to me. This whole thing came together from the director of the project, Jenny from Gokata. She is someone that is here locally in Charlotte, North Carolina, and puts together artists with uh, commercial contractors, which is really freaking cool. She gave me the opportunity to be a part of this project, and you know I want to thank her for that. If you're interested in finding this mural, I will put the address down below. It's located at the Camden Apartments in Noda, Charlotte, North Carolina. The mural is on the actual parking deck. It's definitely something that you just have to go see for yourself. You know, every time I go back and look at it, I see something new that I didn't notice the last few hundred times that I've gone. If you have any questions or any comments about it, please let me know down below. And uh, a special thanks to Matt, Darian, Jenny, and the people over at Camden for allowing me to be a part of this project. If you stayed this long through the video, thank you. You're the real MVP. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.